It's bittersweet. It's wonderful. Uh, suddenly I have nothing to do. No, uh, it's, it's, it's a great time. Uh, it, I'm excited. Uh, you're going to hear from each of them. And the Holy Spirit has stacked up a, a morning of testimony. I don't know if you caught it yet. But if you haven't caught it yet, it's going to continue with the ministry of the word today. Open up your Bibles to Joshua 4. There's a heart here uh, that we receive the ministry of the word, right? That the graduation service is much more uh, than just a simple ceremony, right? That we receive the ministry of the word today as well. So Joshua 4, I'm going to start reading in verse 1. When all the nation had finished passing over the Jordan, so here's the Israelites after the wilderness passing over the Jordan into the promised land. The Lord said to Joshua, take 12 men from the people, from each tribe, and command them saying, take 12 stones from here out of the midst of the Jordan, from the very place where the priest's feet stood firmly, and bring them over with you. Lay them down in the place where you lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the 12 men from the people of Israel, whom he had appointed, a man from each tribe. And Joshua said to them, pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of of the Jordan, and take up each of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the people of Israel, that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, what do those stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. These things happen. These stories are historical realities of how God moves among his people, right? Not just moral lessons to be understood, but to understand who God is in a greater way. And of course, they crossed the Jordan. I'm going to pick it back up in verse 19. The people came up out of the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month, and they encamped at Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And those 12 stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. And he said to the people of Israel, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, What do these stones mean? Then you shall tell, let your children know, Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over. So that... All the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. It's good for us. Rites of passage are good for us. As a family, we have rites of passage as well. It's important to note here, right, this is the second time, right, that he mentions it. They had already crossed the Red Sea. They had a time of wandering. And now they come to another river, the River Jordan, and crossed over that as well. So after the redemption out of Egypt, there is another crossing over here. And God instructs his people, when that happens, remember. Place a marker in your life that these things happen. That you remember, that you can tell your children. Testimony is important. A rite of passage is biblical. Remembering the work of God in our lives, crossing over into the promise. It's not just about the one time of salvation, which is incredible, the one time of redemption, but there is still life ahead. God continues to move in miraculous ways in our life as we cross through things together. So not only is it biblical, it is relevant because he is still working in this way. He is still working in miraculous ways, taking us through things. It is important to recognize that fact. So I want that to have those things in your mind as we go through this morning. What do those stones mean to you that the hand of the Lord is mighty? As an internship group, we have gone through some things. Cal, come on up. Share what we have gone through. There's a, uh, hi, my name's Cal. I should start there. Uh, I'm a member here at this church. 
Um, one of the, there's going to be a lot of people talking today, so I'll be brief and quick. And uh, But I do have a word that the interns and, you know, and I, that we have walked through, you know, and we've, we've come to this, the other side of this river, and we have stacked stones with one another, and, I, and you'll be hearing way more about these stacked stones from Josh just in a little bit. But for us, we had a time where we came to realize what it meant, what it truly meant to lose their life. You know, to really find out what it means to lose our life. In Matthew 16, verse 24, it says, Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Forever, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? This is a popular verse, one that maybe you've heard before. But I think that we shed new light on it in the internship this year. Um, because we spent a lot of time you know, they're, they're young. We spend a lot of time talking about what their lives are supposed to be. And that there's this supposed to be life that wrestles with their actual life. And there's a lot of pressure from people, from the world, from themselves, of what they're supposed to be. And that they're supposed to be this or they're supposed to be that. And once the supposed to be's are in place, then they'll be ready to work on their relationship with God. For Makai, she was supposed to be a strong friend. For Haley, she was supposed to know what she was going to do with her life. For Shane, he was supposed to know what they wanted him to be. And for Mitchell, he was supposed to have a degree. All these things lined up. To deny ourselves, as Jesus puts it, to deny ourselves means to put away these supposed to be's. Now, does this mean to put away maturity? Don't be silly. Paul writes in Galatians, of course not. He, answer, he says a rhetorical question and then says, of course not. At GC, we say, don't be silly. Does that mean that we're supposed to put away our maturity? Don't be silly. Let me clarify then. Too often our supposed to be's stop us from moving forward in a kingdom way. For me, I noticed that all these supposed to's, they were affecting my ministry. And I learned from the, in, from the interns that I needed to let go of these supposed to be's so that I could break free from them. Because they were my measurement. These supposed to be's were how I measured myself. No, we're supposed to lose our supposed to be's. You know what I mean by that? Not supposed to be's. And pick up our daily cross to live in the freedom of Christ. The interns are given a particular pointed season, you know, this last school year, a particular pointed season in their lives to persevere for the Lord. And we, as a church, we discipled them, and we found that we too needed to learn this lesson. It wasn't just the interns that needed to learn this, but all of us. So we as a church have learned, I mean, I really believe this, but we as a church, we've learned to drop the supposed to be's and to move forward in a kingdom way. What are, what are your supposed to be's? Perhaps we're supposed to be outgoing. And once I become more outgoing, then I'll be able to move forward in a kingdom way. Or suppose you're, suppo or suppose you're supposed to know more. Once I, I suppose that once I know more, then I'll be ready to move forward in a kingdom way. Or supposed to not be stressed. Or supposed to not have anxiety. Once I get those things in order, then I'll be able to move forward in a kingdom way. Are we not supposed to be joyful? Once I get joyful, then I'll be able to move forward in a kingdom way. And that these supposed to be's are actually chains, things locking us up. 
lose your life. Lose your supposed to be's. Lose your lives for him and pick up your cross. The theme that God had for us, the interns this year, was to wander home. And interns, you all were, in your own way, in the wilderness when we started this internship. And you were walking through a wilderness of thorns and bristles, being cut up and scratched, defiantly believing that this wilderness was freedom. Defiantly. And yet, you all wandered in. You all wandered home into this promised land, a land of milk and honey. Do not wait to get all your supposed to be's in line. Wander home, church. When they wandered home, they lost their life. They persevered. They found that not only were they chained to these supposed to be's, but they were matured in these supposed to be's. Makai learned that her strength was found in her weakness. Haley learned that her life is not what she does, it's just who she is. Shane found that he is exactly who the Heavenly Father wants him to be. And Mitchell found clarity and momentum for his future. God matures us in our supposed to be's, not measures us by them. Like our historical family, we've wandered in to the promised land. We've wandered home. Be like Caleb and Joshua, who knew that the promised land was good. But that didn't mean that you weren't going to have to fight for it. There are giants, even at home. Kick them out. (laughs) Interns, you taught us this. That the more we deny ourselves, we find ourselves. And the more like Christ we are, the more like ourselves we are. My charge to you is this, interns. Lose your life. Lay down your life. Pick up your daily cross. And you'll find him. It's not a new charge, but rather a continuance of what you've already been doing. And then, finally, for you guys, that you've taught us this. Thank you. And we have so much more to learn from you. I'm excited. But also, you have so much more to learn from us. This is home. I'm proud of you all. God bless. It is a day of testimony, so I, wanna, I want you to hear from them as well. You heard from Cal, who they've labeled as courageous. <laughs> they kind of give a, a word. I think it was Shane that, that gave these words. Mitch, next. Mitch, come on up here. I want you to hear from them these stones that they're pulling from the river. So God receives me as I am. All righty. So I actually have my stuff up here this time, and I'm not going to lose focus like I did last time. (laughs) So God receives me as I am. A thing for me throughout my life is that I'm always trying to pursue, was always trying to pursue a higher goal. What can I, what can I do? What can I do to make myself better? What can I do to reach that higher level in both, you know, status perhaps even, and even in my Uh, walk with God, it was always, how can I be more penitent? How can I be a better person? How can I be, you know, you know, more of a good person? How do I produce more fruit? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And I always fell short of my own expectations because I, they were absolutely crazy. (laughs) Uh, A verse that stood out to me during the internship uh, was when we were going over, uh, Philippians, and if I can just scroll back because my phone decided to tilt its own way, there we go, <coughs> uh, from uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, let's make sure that I'm on the right one, yes I am, 
Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both in will and to work for his good pleasure. See, the thing with that is, it's not my will that's going to be satisfactory in this. It's God working through me in order to produce a good fruit. There's nothing I can do in my own power. My own power is insufficient in order to do this. It's no matter how hard I try. And so it's even hard for me because it's oh, I've always been wanting to be self-sufficient in what I did. And it's that, well, leap of faith, that, let's say, to give away, give away my own strength and my own power so that God can take over. And that's, I think that's not only important for me, but for a lot of, uh, a lot of others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Stay up here. All right, right over there. All right, All right next, next up is our strength, Makai. Makai, come on up here. Makai, I am not alone in my weakness. He is strong. Good morning. Um, okay, so just a little bit of background. Um, I hate crying. Um, I, I don't like crying. I don't like being weak. I don't like being vulnerable. At least I didn't um, until I got to the internship. And they were like, hey, like crying is okay. Having feelings is a natural thing. It's all right. So um, what's becoming one of my favorite verses and just kind of a foundation for me is 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And it says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Um, I just, during the internship this year, I just, I was okay with not being okay all the time, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and I feel like that was a huge step for me because I always tried to be like, oh, I'm, I'm okay. I'm the strong friend. You can come to me. You can vent. But how can you be strong all the time? How can you always, always, always be the strong friend, you know? Um, and I just learned that God is really my refuge, and he is just the best, best, best friend I could ever have. And just to run to him and just be able to cry and worship and sit at his feet and just know that he loves me has been just such a blessing. So thank you guys so much for just welcoming me with open arms, and thank you for the internship, and thank you for loving me. Um, I love all of you guys, even if I don't know your name, even if you don't know me. I love you, and Jesus loves you too, and that's all I have to say. (laughs) Our spark, Shane, come on up here. Hello. Uh, Just a little background about me. Um, Four years ago, in 2014, I met Josh as I was singing karaoke at a local subway. (laughs) Um, It was a great time. Um, Glad I met you there. Just kidding. That didn't really happen. Um... (laughs) So my, so my, uh, my uh, uh, thing is uh, created in Christ for Christ. And uh, the thing that I realized is um, back in Genesis, um, when God created man, he created us in his own image. And for a while, um, just looking at myself, I just, I just didn't like who I was. Like, people would always make fun of me because I was, like, different. I was, like, the class clown, and people would always tell me to stop making jokes and stuff like that. And so... There was a time I just, you know, I just decided, well, I'm going to stop, you know, being funny. I'm going to stop doing all this stuff because people don't like me for it. So why would I continue in that? And then I realized that um, <clears throat> that just just that God, when, when you, we're created by God, for God, and he put certain traits in us for a reason. And it's no surprise that some people will tell you that you're bad at this, you're bad at that, don't do this, don't do that. And then we get stuck in that, and then we're like, oh, great, now what do I do, you know? We get stuck. And, um, yeah, when I was just reading um, Exodus, and I love Exodus, <laughs> I love Exodus, especially Exodus 14, um, just reading the crossing of the Red Sea and just um, just the process um, that they went through. Like, it wasn't, 
and like the Prince of Egypt where, you know, they like the sea splits and then all of a sudden they're on the other side singing a musical number probably. <laughs> um, it was a process. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's kind of what it is. And now I, I can operate in my freedom. And ever since then, so many crazy things have happened. I've um, decided to start speaking to youth. Um, my um, message is actually called Into the Promised and um, hashtag find your freedom for the millennials and younger generations who get what that means. Um, yeah, and so just, yeah, crazy things, just cool things happen when you just operate as yourself and you just be yourself and uh, living for God. How mm -hmm. much time do I have? That's good. 30 minutes? Okay. Um, also, <laughs> that's it. Good job. Good job. And our pure sister, Haley, who learned my identity is not in my mistakes, but in Jesus. Good morning. Um, as you just heard me say, my name is Haley. Okay, so this stone, maybe you relate to this, but I am a very um, self-sabotaging sometimes. Mm. I have always been my own thorn in my side when it comes to just um, knowing my mistakes. Like, they just have been something that has always hindered me. But getting closer and closer to God, it's just knowing that he forgets our sins when we repent. He mm -hmm. completely has forgiven. He has laid himself down for that, for our mistakes, for our sins. And that has been so huge, and I never really thought that that was something that was like, oh my gosh. I, I've always been like, I need, to, I need to punish myself. God doesn't want to do that, I'll do it. But that is absolutely not what God wants for you to do. That's absolutely not what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to live freely in his love. Mm -hmm. And that can be so hard because it's so unmeasurable, and it's so like, how, how do you, how do you, but it says in Isaiah 43, 25, it is I who sweep away your transgressions for my own sake, and I remember your sins no more, and that has just been so freeing that you are loved, I am loved, regardless of anything you have ever done, he will never look away from you and think badly but always look at you with purity in his eyes and just, I love you. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. I'm getting a stack of Bibles and devices up here. We got a little surprise part of the way through the year. Uh, and we wanted to honor the work that he did and how God brought him amongst our group as well. Pete, King's Rider, joined us. So it's a little unorthodox, but that's how Pete is. Um, but the group named him Protector, and they knew him, uh, you know, he came late, but he's, he said, I woke to who I am and who Christ is in me. I do not deserve to share the stage with this committed group. <laughs> These guys are fantastic. I had the, the privilege. Well, Josh, I, I'm going to call it a stroke of brilliance. Uh, you guys see what happened here. So I was unable to go to work for about three months. So for one quarter of the year, I got to share the table with these guys. And um, it was amazing. It was just amazing. Cal touched on uh, a portion of this that, that really ministered to me. Um, well, my first thought, I should say, this was when Josh offered the time. I don't want to stand in front of you, sorry. But, <laughs> I'm, trying uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get out of your way. Um, was, yeah. you know, Josh offered, why don't you come down and hang out with the interns? You know, you not do anything else, right? I'm like, well, yeah, I don't really have anything else going on. You know, nothing <laughs> better anyway. Let me tell you this. I have never had anything better going on, mm. ever than to get marinated in God's word and to get marinated in the company of people who are truly seeking 
after God with their, all of their hearts. Everybody can benefit from something like this, truly. And I cannot encourage you enough. As Cal said, I started to talk and then I distracted myself. Did you see how that worked? <laughs> um, Cal said, as I become more like Christ, as I give myself more to Christ, the more he lets me be me. I discovered that for myself during this time. And I, can't, uh, I cannot encourage you enough, really, to, if you have heard any nuggets of truth of these wonderful little tidbits of wisdom that these, these young people have given you, take it. Make it part of yourself. Envelop that. That's when the miracle happens. The miracle change in Christ is when you actually take that wisdom and you enfold it into who you are. The difference with the internship that I noticed, there's a, a, a decent analogy I think the Lord just gave me in the back row. You can be sitting on a balcony watching pilgrims go by, and you can know all about the path from what they tell you, right? Mm -hmm. You can see them going by, and you can hear, oh, there's a great, there's a great hill over there. You should go look at it. You can tell people that. And frequently, that's how Bible study feels to us, is that we feel like we're hearing, oh, there's a great hill over there. You should go check it out. And we hear that and we think, oh, that's a good idea. I should go check that out. So you know about the things of God. You know about the journey. But it's a very different thing to actually be the pilgrim, to actually be on the path. And the difference with internship that I noticed, as opposed to my time that I spent in Bible school, was that Josh and Cal and Jeff and Beth are on the path with them instead of shouting instructions from a balcony. Mm -hmm. So they're tour guides through the word. It's an amazing thing. There's a big difference mm -hmm. in that. There is love. There's care. There's the ability to say, I have been to that hill. Come with me. Let's go look at this together, which we did twice a week mm -hmm. from 8 to noon. It was awesome. <laughs> and so I just, I, I just want to tell you what this did for me, the church having this program, you inviting me to the table. I'm so, so grateful. And so I've got one little verse here. Thank you, phone, for not locking up on me. <laughs> So this comes from 1 Peter chapter 2. Uncle Peter, speaking words of Uncle Peter. You were destined for this, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Bless you guys. You're on the way. I wish I had this 20 years ago. You got a 20-year head start on me, so take it and run. I'm proud of you all. The internship. A community with a common purpose drawn together by God. They gave me a title to a friend. And as a friend, I say, do not fear what the Spirit has for you. I'm saying it this way. They're behind me. They said something. We have wandered home, scratched, bruised, and from briars on the way. He took our pain, the thorns in our side, and wore them as a crown. What do these stones mean for you? This is the incredible reality of being the people of God. It's not just rocks. We are living stones. So I have stacked up on stage for you, church. What do these stones mean to you? Church, we stay on mission. We train, equip, and shape the heart, hands, and minds of the next generation in a kingdom way, as Pete said, together as a cohort, not just teachers lecturing at students, but as a cohort together with all the additional people who have inputted into this internship in various ways. We have done this in a kingdom way. It is a high amount of investment, a high amount of risk, a high amount of sacrifice, 
and can you see the high amount of reward? What do these stones mean to you? They said, my chains are gone. We've been set free. We share in this ministry together, church. Everyone who is tithed. Together, as we stand in worship together. As you have loved them. As you have smiled at them. As you have asked them stories from the internship. We share in this ministry together. You hear Paul pounding in the New Testament, saying that to the churches. We share in this ministry together when we do things like this. And we don't often get the chance to pause. There's a lot of work to do, church. There's a lot of good work that God has prepared for us. So when we get the chance, we need to recognize what God has done as a rite of passage ceremony, as a family. It allows us a moment to appreciate that God has used this family to advance his kingdom. What do these stones mean to you? As a family, what's the purpose of being drawn together as a family? Purpose of family is the forming of persons. We are committed. We've heard what you're doing needs to grow from people who have visited the internship. It is growing. We've seen, we've been doing this for a long time now, actually, church. <laughs> a long time. It needs to grow. It needs to expand. The children's ministry is working on a junior internship where elementary school age kids will be formed and shaped in a similar way. We understand this idea of internship. Jeff is looking into what I'm calling a weekend internship. He doesn't know I'm calling it that. A weekend internship where for one Saturday a month for nine months, we go through something like this so that everybody can have a chance to get some of this training and shaping together. So who's next? Are you the next intern? Junior intern. Weekend intern. Intern intern. <laughs> we have been given the commission to make disciples. We will continue to do this. So this is my charge to you, church. We have been entrusted with this. Continue to pass it on. And church, let us not grow weary doing good. We have been doing this for a long time. Let us continue to invest and sacrifice in this way. Interns, Beth, will you help? Yeah, there you go. Look at that, John. Look at that servant. Interns, my charge to you. What will you do with your freedom? We have put an investment into you. Take the land that's in front of you. Continue training, serving. Invest what you've been given and make disciples. Church, your interns. As a rite of passage in this church, we give them swords, for they have been taught to rightly handle the word of truth. They have been equipped to serve. With each generation, we do this. Jeff, come on up. Best Jeff to close us with a prayer over the interns. Could I have you all just stand in front here and face me this way? Sure. Would that be all right? Because I want to give it to all of us, not just to them, but Good. to all of us as well. It's a prayer, uh, a charge, and a instruction from the book of Romans. Do you believe it? You believe it? Out of Romans. The end of the book, Paul gives instruction and a charge. He says this to all of us. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause division and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching 
you have learned. Keep away from them, for such people are not servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. Everyone has heard about your obedience. So I rejoice because of you. But I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. For the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. Amen. Amen. Going.